Welcome to the Community Points of Distribution Instructional Overview. The Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Army Corps of Engineers designed this overview for the local emergency manager. This presentation will assist you with planning, operating, and closing your local distribution center. What is a point of distribution? A point of distribution, or POD, is where the public goes to pick up emergency supplies following a disaster. The need for a POD is based on the lack of an infrastructure to support the normal distribution of food, water, or other supplies. You, the local emergency management agency, or LEMA, determines the need for a POD, the staffing of the POD, the location of the POD, and the commodities to be distributed there. A POD should accommodate vehicle, pedestrian, mass transit traffic, or a combination of all three. As you can see, a POD operation is complex. There are several things you can do before the disaster to avoid scenes like this. I'm calling the governor's office. There are also things you must do to establish a smooth running pod like this one. Foremost in planning is to identify potential locations. Select sites based on population density. Look at traffic patterns. Ask yourself if people will have to cross a busy street to get supplies. Will this pod location cause a traffic jam? Are there frequent or sharp turns? Can large semi-trucks get in and out of this location? The next step in planning is to design your pod layout. The first question to ask is what size pod is needed? Then how will supplies be distributed? How much should each person get? A general quantity rule is that each person or personal vehicle should receive enough for a household of three. Have you decided where the entrance and exit will be on site? Again, look at the traffic pattern. What's the best location? Will emergency response vehicles have easy access? Project your equipment and personnel requirements well in advance. Staffing is as important to success as finding the right location. Prepare to manage volunteers that you never expected to appear. Also, don't forget a media point of contact. Publicity can make or break your pod operation. Although there is a lot to think about, remember your success is measured by meeting the public's needs. That's why we emphasize the importance of planning. With a developed strategy and coordinated effort, your community will get those life-saving commodities quickly and efficiently. Now that you are prepared, the decision to activate a pod is yours. Take the public need, infrastructure capability, and resources into account before announcing a pod location to the public. The disaster may have created limitations in communications, equipment, transportation, or personnel. Residents are dealing with enough difficulties. Be careful not to add false hope to the list. Once you make the decision to activate, you must assemble a team. A pod team consists of a manager, a loading team, and a support team. The manager is responsible for everything at the pod, including staffing and supply levels, supply chain flow, safety and reporting. Under the direction of the manager, the loading team conducts loading operations. They keep the vehicles moving safely through the line. The support team resupplies, unloads bulk commodities, and sustain staff operations, including rest areas and trash removal. A public information officer is part of the support team, too. You will need one on site to talk to the media and provide information to residents. Safety at the pod site is paramount. Inspect your work area daily. Wear proper gear and report injuries or incidents immediately. Each Lima has different issues to consider. You can see why planning ahead is vital to your pod operation and your community's recovery.
The United States Army Corps of Engineers has developed a typing standard for pods, which you may want to adopt. A Type 3 pod is the smallest. It is 150 feet by 300 feet. A staff of 19 personnel supports three loading points and one vehicle lane. This pod can serve 5,000 people per day. A Type 2 pod is 250 feet by 300 feet. A staff of 34 personnel supports six loading points and two vehicle lanes. This pod serves 10,000 people a day. A Type 1 pod is the largest and measures 250 feet by 500 feet. A staff of 78 personnel supports 12 loading points and four vehicle lanes. A Type 1 pod is only used in large metropolitan areas and it serves 20,000 people per day. This is an actual Type 3 pod being set up. Pods are generally open to the public for 12 hours a day. Recommended hours are from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Shutting down for resupply from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. is a good practice. During this time, staff numbers decrease. This gives your personnel and volunteers a break. This also reduces the amount of time the pod is open to the public in low light conditions. Now the pod is ready to open. A vehicle enters the pod through a 12 foot wide lane marked with traffic cones. The traffic controller stands at the front where everyone can see him or her and signals a vehicle to stop. Once everyone stops, the traffic controller blows one long whistle blast and shouts, load. Load is echoed by the loaders. The loaders load supplies into the car and then step back and shout, clear. The traffic controller visually verifies that everyone has cleared the line. Another long whistle blasts, followed by a hand signal. The next one enters the line and the process repeats. The pod manager monitors the burn rate to keep the supply chain flowing. The consumption rate is reported to Lima each day. Once the disaster winds down, these inventory reports validate costs and are used to recoup costs. When recovery has reached a point where the local community can sustain itself, the pod will close. Make sure you give an advance notification of closing. Let Lima, the property owner, and the public know 24 to 36 hours before you shut down operations. Have a plan in place of where to send anyone who shows up after closing. Some people may still need help. Make sure the site is completely clean when you leave. This maintains goodwill with the owners, so you can use their site again should the need arise. An overview of the pod mission has been provided. It's now up to you as the local emergency manager to plan, organize and exercise as a team. Start today. Share your knowledge of the importance of the pod mission with your government and private sector partners. Your community is counting on you to be able to get life-saving resources to them. Thank you for taking the time to review this video brought to you by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, Emergency Management Institute, and the United States Army Corps of Engineers, Readiness Support Center.